it dawned on me that I should get some outtakes of the rain. And uh, this isn't its peak, but let's go. All right. No lightning, no thunder. Hmm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, a mud puddle. Oh my gosh. I made, we made a mud puddle. Oh, if I go too far out, my, my cell phone gets dribbled on. Man, this is like the third or fourth day of rain that we've gotten in 70 days. I'm pretty excited. I am pretty excited. You see my little canopy roof is, well, that explains the mud puddle. All right, I am safe and dry in my little tiny. That's for heat, that's why I put that there. But it proves to be helpful in the rain, doesn't it? So, all right, and once it's done, I'm gonna go in my container and see whether or not my window's leaked. I'm just gonna hit pause for now. <laughs> None of this is sad, it's, it's just not this. This little trailer. None of this is sad. Well, it picked up quite a bit. Shaking, shaking my little pop-up pop camper around. Let's see. Woo! Uh-oh. Knocked out a support post. Looky there. It's already taken some damage. I even have mud puddles. I will be so happy when I am inside those those Connexes <laughs> shipping container. I do not have a real secure feeling inside of a pop-up camper in the middle of the rain, you know? I guess it should be romantic. Look glad little Reggie's not with me right now. He's off being babysat by Leah. Alright, but I'm still safe and dry. I guess I could go out there and shave my beard and clean myself up a little bit in the, in the middle of this little rainstorm. We'll see. Steve again, a thousand year home in the middle of the rainstorm. So I shifted from the little pop-up camper to the, uh, the Connex so I could take a look at everything that's inside the Connex. Let's see, it's about, oh, six o'clock at night. I'm halfway through a storm and it's an appreciable storm. Let me rotate. Well, you can see uh, out through the windows quite a bit. So when I take a look here, this is this is as expected. That's the one that I didn't do any uh, any uh, like right there in the sill plate. Not so much from the sides, but definitely from that sill plate. So all I got is a temporary piece of wood up there, and then a piece of aluminum tape. And uh, it's definitely, definitely seeping in. Looky there. All right, that's the one I said I'd get an F on, and indeed I get an F. Now I ro overhauled this one. I still see a little moisture here. A little moisture there. I'm gonna guess. Um, man, that might be old. That moisture might be old. So, and that's without the header on it yet. Yeah, it's still missing a header. But I, I'm gonna go from um, a D. Oh, right there is pretty bad. I'm gonna go from a D minus to a C minus in that I'm getting there. Again, all, all of these things still have more work to do on them. I, I'm not heavily devoted. Now, this one, it was Leaking big time. I dialed it back a little bit, didn't I? I mean, I didn't fix it. You look, uh, look at the door jam. Doesn't have the weather strip on it. Doesn't have the caulking that I need. And I'm gonna pour concrete at the bottom of the sill plate to uh, so I can put a uh, weather stripping and sill plate on the bottom. So that remains to be done. Now this one, I'm still getting some leakage here in there so definitely something's going on 
where I didn't get in there. And I, I'm going to guess it's just the water hitting the top and then running around the, the outside. And that one had drips right there. Oh, I did it. I found the leak. I fixed it. All right. All right, so um, I went from a D minus. If I factor out that one, I know I haven't fixed it all. Ooh, ooh, scary. Ooh. Oh, oh, Rembrandt lighting is the most flattering lighting. That has to be at a 45 degree obtuse angle to your face, and then you just, just do it. Just that's the there. I very mysterious. Very mysterious. So uh, anyway, C minus on this storm. It's a substantial storm. I want to tell you, I feel a lot better in this uh, shipping container with the metal over me in the middle of a storm than I do in that pop-up trailer where every little breeze, I it literally do that. I, it shakes my thing, and then my eyes get big like that. I'm a fearless man. I fear nothing, but I don't like being in that storm. So anyway, uh all right, so I'm to a C minus. There is a lot more, uh, like I said, once I wrap this thing in the uh, earth bags and I get the uh, outside sill plates on, the cross beams on, man, I, I'm not gonna have any water leakage in here. So uh, very happy um, in major storms to have a little bit in the middle of all of this. So um, it's not as scary as I once thought it would be. <laughs> I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna cut that out. Maybe not, I'm super tired. All right, uh, there you go. Used butanol, I used, uh, so what I did is I took the infrastop and I cut it so that it was bigger than the hole and then I put the wood on and then I screwed it down so I have that on the inside acting like a vapor barrier. And then on the outside I uh, take butanol. Now on this one that I didn't, right? It's a good little test, looky there. Oh my gosh, tons, right? Tons. Compare that to the one that I am I'm weatherizing. And that, that butanol tape, that's not very expensive stuff. And then, uh, you know, nothing. So I licked it. Those are old stains that you see there from the last time. Well, yeah. Oh. So I'm pretty happy. All righty. Well, thank you for joining. I'm sorry for being silly. I'm just tired. But uh, looking forward to uh, getting this thing done. So wish me well in the rain. Let me see. I'll push it open here. That's not half bad out there. Very lovely. All right. It's 7.30. The rain came in about 6 or so. So, yeah, more than a little bit of rain. <clears throat> so my water trough is full and overflowed. I saw Dallas got a whole summer's worth of rain in a single storm. I feel bad for those folks. So that was put up with duct tape and magnets. <laughs> and the gutter's still working out, even though there's a solar shade here with ropes that's banging up against it on a regular basis. I'll, I'll get back up there and I'll I'll redo that gutter uh, one more time. But my goal is to be off grid and have my own, uh, you know, harvest my own water. And it's, this drought's made it really difficult. I gotta show you my umbrella. Hey, isn't that the coolest umbrella? All right, it's gonna rain on my phone. All right, looks pretty good. So this <clears throat> soil out here, they actually call this jello ground because, uh, oh, it's uh, sand for about two foot down and then it hits clay. So when the sand gets saturated, then it, it actually becomes a, uh, um, a semi-solid. You can walk on it and, and actually see it spring. There, I'm not anywhere near that. But uh, during the storm, my cooler, which was on my picnic table, the soil gave out the supports and 
the picnic table fell over and dropped my cooler. So I didn't break a single beer. So, whew, thank goodness none of my beer got broken, right? Yeah. So uh, it's not really raining that hard. I just don't want my camera all wet. So, and I'm planning to do a long walk here. Even though it's 7.30, I, I think I got a little sunset. I'm, I want to walk up and take a look at the stock pond and see how it's behaving. And I didn't want my uh, cell phone to get all wet. So. So uh, this here was, was going to turn to mud. So that's one reason why I'm building a second drive. Right over here where this wood pile is, and that was pushed up before I got here. Whoever cleared the uh, fence line pushed that up years ago. I'm going to put in a stock pond. I'm going to redirect all of this flow that way. But uh, this is why I'm putting in a second drive. Because this will turn into mud in a heck of a hurry. Now I am work from home, so I won't. I don't have to drive back and forth a lot, but uh, really something. So there's the little electric fence. That pole that was uh, driven in there has not been providing enough ground, and I uh, started with a six-foot pole and put in an eight one, and that's a ten-foot pole right there. It's, uh, the ground's so dry that it's just not, uh, not given the conductivity that they need. Well, let's see if I can get electrocuted messing around with one hand. In the rain with an umbrella. Woo-wee! Did it. So I'm just walking up to take a look at my stock pond, but interestingly enough, my rancher farmer neighbor texted me and said, Oh no, your tractor's in the rain. <laughs> My tractor's in the rain. He said, Do you need help pulling it into a barn? I don't have a barn yet. So I'm going to walk up and look at my tractor and tip the seats if I forgot. So my tractor is an outdoor tractor, it's not one of them highfalutin uppity tractors that gets a barn. It has to survive just sitting out there. So, but I'll tip the seats. I don't like the seats all wet. So that cow is called Screen 2. I'll zoom in. Got any idea why? And that one out there, that one's Scream 1. <laughs> oh, and there's Baby Scream way over yonder. Let me get you Baby Scream. Right there. Moo! All right, where is he? Baby Scream. All right. Well, I almost passed the test. So I tipped one of my seats. And that's a good thing. Now look at this one. I got it. There. That's it. Now it's officially put up. The reason why it's sitting here is I finished that paddock almost 100%. Look, there's no mesquite in it. I had a full 25 foot trailer. This one, see? And if you watch my videos, you'll see how bad mesquite is to dig out of the ground. So I'm seeing one, two, three, four, I don't know, 30 of them out of there that I gotta dig out. And the cattle can't graze around it because the mesquite has three inch thorns. And as I mentioned before, the, um, Fire ants like it, so the fire ants double down and put their nest underneath these mesquite. 
Even the little ones, they're, they're easy to overlook. This one will have a full, full accoutrement of roots, but look, can you see those? Those, uh, those thorns are for real. They'll go pop through a boot. The boots that I've got on have steel bottoms. Those boots, the work boots have steel bottoms uh, to keep me from getting in there. But then you see how the, if you look, you can see the cattle are not grazing near the, uh, near those mesquite. They're giving a little two foot radius around it. So I will, I'll finish doing that. That's anyway, that's why my tractor's sitting there. I love Texas farmers. I, I love their hearts. Texas text me and go, oh my God, your tractor's in the rain. <laughs> you need, need help hauling it out of the rain. I thought that was the sweetest thing I've ever run into. Somebody going to go out in the middle of a storm and help me drag a tractor up. All right. So now I'm going to speed walk over there. We'll take a look. But yeah, can you see the difference in my feel? Like, look, the cattle, the cattle do prefer this side, right? Yeah, on that side, I got all those mesquite. So. All right, well, that's actually more than I thought. So these stock ponds have to be in relationship to the amount of runoff or else you end up with a dry pond. That pond still has money, so uh, water, so um, watch for his money. So all of these fields, you can't see the taper, but there's a gentle taper right down to a, a little swale there. So there's 10 acres of runoff. And look, I did. I do have a little runoff. I am so surprised. A little runoff coming down here. Now these cracks still haven't filled up, and uh, I'm not going to go any closer down there. I'll, I'll leave that to the brave cattle, so I don't want to get sucked in. But yesterday I came up here and I, I cut off all the mesquite and scrub that was growing, and I pruned up some of those trees. The cattle's like to stand under them, and I don't know. I might leave those trees. I know that they suck up water, but I might leave just two trees. And um, for reference, I got tired and wasn't able to finish up clear cutting this side. Oh, I see some lightning and I'm walking around out here with an umbrella. I'm going to head towards home. Anyway, so that's the side that I haven't done and that side I have. So. Even though I'm, uh, I'm, you know, working on a house for me, I can't stop uh, being uh, working on a ranch too, you know. And uh, the restorative farming and agriculture that's not going to wait for me to uh, get done. Every season it's going to grow, and if I let these weeds and mesquite get a hold, then next year I have twice the job, right, to cut them out. And so uh, anyway, I've got another 20 feet here to. To clear cut but I, I took care of that side and got most of those thrown into the ravine we'll wander over to the ravine how about that i'll speed walk you over there So that's the ravine that I threw all the mesquite in just yesterday. The moke too. Look at that. One day in this heat. They would think it was a hundred years ago. I've cut up that firewood, put that there to to stop maybe a little bit of this washout. That washout is every bit of four foot deep. I'm gonna stop filming here in a minute. The sky above me is rumbling right above me, but Water's not running in there yet. You can see where there's been some flotsam where 
the water's gotten pretty fierce. Uh, I might lose all of this in here. I don't know. I was going to stake it down. All right. That's it for Steve in a thousand-year home doing something dumb walking around with an umbrella in the rain. Uh, I just saw fly flashes of lightning, so I'm all done. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Epilogue. I made it safely back with my umbrella uh, at sundown. The solar lights are beginning to turn on, so I'm going to turn in for the evening. And uh, Man, I can't wait to be in that Connex. Man, I can't wait. I sat in there during the rain and just felt uh, so much better to I don't know, a cloister is what I'm shooting for. And I, I tell you, I felt that cloister vibe. So the little stained glass window and I opened up the big doors and I could look out. I'm not gonna delete the big doors, I'm gonna leave them. And I'm gonna put little French doors in there so you can step through with a French door. And then uh, the big doors you can open up if you don't think there's mosquitoes. One nice thing about this rain is it keeps all the insects down. After the rain, they'll all be out. So I'll be able to run my computer tonight without a million little guys getting into this camper, which is not uh, bug proof. <laughs> it is watertight though. I've demonstrated that. All right. Like and subscribe if I haven't said it 32 times and uh, join me on this adventure. <laughs>